was really just a full breakdown, you know, everything that you need to learn, basically the A to Z. From where to start, exactly what to do, how to do it, all the systems and programs. The resources and things that were given throughout the training was just phenomenal. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome to the Deal Desk. My name is Steven Morales. I make live calls every Friday at 12 p.m. EST. If this is your first time watching on my channel, welcome. Basically, how this works is you can head over to the reitoolbox.com, okay? You submit your leads. It doesn't matter if it's on the East Coast, West Coast, anywhere. It doesn't matter what market, okay? You will see me call them live. If they don't answer after twice, I move on to the next lead. Um, if I call your lead, you feel more than free to resubmit it. So it goes back to the top of the list. Okay. Anyways, um, you know, this is always a great uh, way for just, you know, training purposes as well. You know, a lot of people, they binge watch this or they have their team binge watch this just so you can see how I can communicate with people, overcome objections, set up appointments everything. So no matter what happens, you're always going to learn something. So let's get started. Okay. We are, let's see, where are we picking up here? We are going to Tampa, Florida. All right. We got one in, we got a few in Tampa. Then we got Georgia, Orlando, Miami. So let me pull this up. I'd like to show you guys what I'm looking at as many details as I can. And see what's going on. All right. So this one, actually, this is a duplicate. Um, but I'm going to call it back because I don't think these people answered the phone. Okay. I don't think these people answered the phone. So I will um, call this lead back for you. Let me share my screen so you could see what I'm looking at. This this property is a, um, it's much newer. It's new construction. So, um, you know, the chances of getting it at a very deep discount aren't very high, but basically they're asking $430,000. Not much repairs are needed. I was looking at this house. I think it was built 2016 or something, but let's give them a call. Just because the house is newer, it's in great shape, doesn't always mean that they won't be willing to sell at a discount. I've, I've locked up deals where people aren't really, um, you know, the house isn't really distressed, you know, it doesn't need much work, but depending on their situation, the person needs to sell. OK, it always depends what they're going through and how motivated they might be. So let's give them a call and I'll give you some tips on um, how to handle leads like this as well. Let me dial here. Three, eight. So this is Mr. Banning. Put on speaker. Hopefully they pick up the phone. So this one, there are some 430. I always run comps while it's ringing. Never run comps before because then you'll be wasting time. This house is built 2018. It's three bedroom, three and a half bath, 5,000 square feet. Um, yeah, let me uh, let me call one more time. They're actually asking a realistic price. I see the ARV is between 450 to 500. They're asking 430, so it doesn't mean it's a slam dunk deal, but these are leads that you can still capitalize on if you were to list a property on the open market, you know? I see I see a comp right here down the street. Hey, Mr. Benning. Hi, my name is Steven. I, I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on Swoop Street. Were you still looking to sell? Um, as I said, the number is right. Okay. Did I catch it a good time? Um, you know, could you call me back? You definitely call me at a bad time in that. What's a better time I can have my partner give you a call back? Um, like around four o'clock my time. Are you you live in Tampa, right? I'm assuming. Okay. Are you on EST? 
HST. Gotcha. Okay. I'll let them know. Thank you. Um, ah, so hold on a second. He doesn't live in this house. Looks like it's uh wife's. Oh, the wife is still living in it. All right. So they plan on moving. Um, anyways, he did answer the phone, but he said to call back four o'clock his time. Um, I think he said MST. So I would resubmit this lead if you want me to call them back. Uh, but he is asking 430,000. So what I was saying about this, let me see if I could pull this up. What I was saying about these kinds of properties that are like much newer or they, they need little to no work, you have to um, you have to approach them a little bit differently. You know, you have to approach them a little bit differently with these kinds of houses. I am a little bit more flexible when it comes to my maximum allowable offer, because when I'm looking at comps, and I'm looking at distressed properties, I don't really base my max offer off of the distressed properties, obviously, if this one's in good shape, okay? So the market's crazy right now. People are paying a high price uh, right now, but that's why I'm always flexible. And I'm, I'm not afraid to go a little bit higher than my regular MAO if the property is in good shape. And this one was built in 2018, so... Um, you know, there's not much that needs to be done according to what I see in the notes. So here's a property built 2018. Um, sometimes these properties, sometimes you'll get houses that are like newer construction and then they'll be next like older houses. For example, this one and in Tampa or in most markets, they do the same thing in Tampa, especially they'll just bulldoze the house. Right. So like if I got talking to this seller right here and I got this under contract. Renovating the property probably wouldn't be the best exit strategy on this. It was probably sell for land value to a builder. So it just depends on the market and where you're at. Anyways, let's move on to the next lead. If you guys have any questions, good morning, good morning from Maryland. Good morning. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them. Let's move on to the next uh, lead. We're still in... Uh, let me see. All right, we're actually in Georgia now. So we're actually in Georgia. Let me pull this up and we'll get started. Um, you know, so remember, when you're calling people that have newer construction homes, don't expect to get it at a deep, deep discount. But really dig into why are they looking to sell. I always do takeaways. I, I'm always like, man, what, this seems like a great property. Like, why, why are you looking to sell this? The more surpri surprised I sound the more open they're going to be and they're going to realize, Hey, this guy's not, this guy's not thirsty like all these other investors. Right. So, um, make sure you, you, you have that same attitude. Okay. So let me pull this up. Um, this looks like a, looks like almost a fire damage house. Actually, this is in Atlanta, Georgia. Look how beautiful this house is. Okay. All right, so this is the house. What's the story behind this one? So seller won't give a price. Just said we'll sell for the right price. I love those leads. Um, nothing been updated. No AC. Needs new roof. Complete rehab needed. Um, what's the reason they want to sell? Seller mentioned he wanted to go with a realtor to list it. Interesting. Um you know, something like this would have to sell cash if it was listed. Reason for selling has been unoccupied for a very long time. Okay. So, you know, people that are looking to list these kinds of properties, obviously the market's crazy right now, so it's going to be a bidding war. But I start trying to talk about the pros and cons of listing the property, right? Because some people, they don't want to go through that listing process. Some do, some don't. But that's why you really got to feel them out. All right. Anyways. Let's give them a call, Mr. Brown. <clears throat> Mr. Brown. Let's see here. Mr. Brown. Okay, so let's give them a call. Now, what I noticed in the notes, it said that... Um, he didn't want to give a price, but he would sell for the right price. We have to figure out what is that white right price, right? White price. What is that right price? Or at least the right price range. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh oh, this is one of those numbers that don't even dial or don't don't doesn't even ring. It says it's calling. Hello. Mr. Brown. Yeah. Hey, my name is Steven. I think you spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on uh, McDaniel Street. Were you still looking to sell? Uh yes. Perfect. Did I catch it a good time? Uh, this is uh, not necessarily a good time, but I, I understand what you're saying, but what's going on? Yeah, uh, well, my name is Steven. I wanted to call you back and give you an offer. Um, I don't want to rush it. It takes about seven minutes. Is that okay? Do you have about seven minutes? Uh, hold on one second. Okay. Never rush. I want to I want to make sure he commits to seven minutes. If, if, he, if he can't have a commitment. Okay. It is a real estate agent handling that property right now. And they're uh, handling all the, um, all the uh, contact information and, uh, you mm. know, so, yeah, they're, they're sending the pop property right now. Her name is Kim Kenny Brew. She's from. Uh, okay. It's already listed on the MLS. When did it, when did it go active on the market? Okay. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I'll have my partner reach the agent then. What, what's it listed for before I pull this up? Nine eighty four. Yeah. Yep. Yes, sir. And that's listed. What's it listed for? Because I don't see it here. Okay. What's her best contact number? I'm going to get the agent's contact number. I'm going to call the agent. So give me a second. Obviously, I want to keep this confidential. So I'm not going to put it on speaker. Uh-huh. Okay. Six, one, four, nine. And what's her name? Perfect. Okay, I will give her a call. Thank you. But so uh, he was telling me some, you know, information. So you know, what's funny is that he he handed this he handed this over to an agent, but he doesn't know what price the agent listed it at. Which it doesn't make any sense to me. Like if I'm listing a house, I would want to tell the agent what I'm listed at. This guy doesn't know what it's listed for. <laughs> so. Um, Let's give the agent a call. And remember, just because a property is listed with an agent, you know, doesn't mean that you can still talk with the agent. Some sellers feel a lot more comfortable having a real estate agent represent them. Our approach is the exact same way with the agent as if it was a homeowner. Now, if the agent um, insist on using their contract. We want to make sure that number one, it's assignable. And number two is an inspection period, right? Some agents are going to be okay using your contract. Some agents will not be okay using your contracts. If they want to use your contracts, don't freak out. Don't hesitate. Just make sure that it's assignable and it has an inspection period. All right. So let's call this agent. I got her name or number. He doesn't even know what it's listed at. That's that's um, that's interesting. That's the first time I hear that. I give it to an agent, but I don't know, you know, what I'm selling it for. That's basically what he's saying. So let's give the agent a call and uh, see what she says. I mean, the house is in horrible shape. It doesn't show active on the MLS yet, though. It must have just been brand new. Um. Anyways. I'm, I'm going to be running comms. What's that? I did dial the right number. Let me make sure. Mm, yeah. This is the correct number. So if she doesn't pick up, um, you know, you can resubmit this lead. But I would definitely call the guy back, get the agent's number, reach out to the agent. Hi, Kim. 
My name is Steven. I actually spoke with uh, Mr. Brown in regards to McDaniel Street. Did I catch it a good time? Is working with a different set of clients. He reached out to me initially. Okay. But now he's working with some other people. I would say reach back out to him to see which direction he's going in. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. I'll reach out back to him then. All right. Thank you. What is going on here? So the guy gave me the agent's number. I called the agent. The agent said that he decided to move forward with somebody else. So now I'm going to call the seller back. Um, <laughs> hold on. I, I want to make sure. Yeah, this is the actual seller. Sometimes you get these weird scenarios. So let me call the seller back. And um, I don't know what's going on. Something seems kind of kind of off with this. So let's call the seller back. Hello. Mr. Brown, uh, this is Steven. I just spoke with you. I just want to let you know, I, I spoke with Kim. She told me to reach out back to you because uh, she mentioned you decided to move forward with another client, if I'm understanding correctly. She decided to move forward with another client? No, she mentioned that you decided to move forward with another client. Oh, uh, it's, it's, what, it's what she decided then. She hasn't, she hasn't told me anything about uh, any, any person that wants to... Uh, no, she, she hasn't told me anything like... Uh, I'm, I'm moving with someone else. I just more so said, okay, Kim is the person that's doing it. Okay. I guess I'll, I'll address her on that and see what's happening. Oh, no, no problem. I mean, I, I'd like to make you an offer regardless of who you're working with, if that's okay. I just want to make sure I caught you at a good time because it takes about seven minutes. Okay, let me uh, put, put everything down so I can... Uh... What's happening? What's, what's going on? Perfect. So, uh, again, my name is Steven. My process is actually very, very simple. I just want to ask you a few more questions other than what I see here in the notes that my partner put down. And basically what I'll do is I'll analyze the area on the computer to see what I can offer you. Like I said, it takes about seven minutes. And I like letting every seller know up front. I mean, we are a real estate investment company, and I may not always be the good fit. So if I'm not a good fit, I, I promise I won't waste your time. I'll let you know up front that we're not a good fit. Um, and if we're not a good fit, we do also have a team of real estate agents just in case. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. So I'm looking here in the notes um, from McDaniel. It's, I mean, it says complete rehab needed. Is this house fire damaged? No fire damage. It's uh, more so uh, just wear and tear from, I guess, the elements. Okay. Have you seen it recently? No, I haven't seen it today. No, I haven't seen it like no, I haven't seen it recently. No. Okay. Yeah, just it just looks like it needs uh I mean a complete rehab. Can you tell me a little bit more about the interior? Because I, I can only see the exterior, but I'm assuming the interior needs everything. Do you know if like the electric and plumbing is in shape and any of that stuff? It needs a full rehab, the whole thing does. The whole thing. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. And um, if you got an offer that made sense to you, what kind of time frame, you know, were you looking to sell about like a week, a month, a couple months? Well, as far as I know, it's, it's, as far as I know, it's, it can be sold today as far as I know of, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, it's, it seems like a pretty decent area. What's got you looking to sell? You just don't want to, you know, do the work on it? No, it'd be updating the neighborhood and uh, it'll, it'll, it'll help the community. Yeah. Okay. And you, you don't want to uh, re renovate it yourself, I'm assuming? No, I, I don't want to free renovate it. <laughs> I just want to uh, just be, uh, I want to be at peace myself, you know, and uh, yeah. have to, uh, get involved with that because, you know, anything, yeah, it, it'd be about for me to just step away from a lot of things. That makes sense, especially considering the condition it's in. Um, let me take a look around here. I do see online. It's a three one nine hundred twenty four square feet built in nineteen twenties. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so I'm going to be looking at other properties that are similar size. While I'm looking around, I mean, considering the amount of work it needs, it needs complete rehab. Everything. Did you have any ideas to what you think it might be worth, or what you were looking to at least sell for? I'm sorry. I, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know. I don't know those numbers. I'm sorry. I, I don't know the numbers. Yet. No, no problem. That's what I'm here for. I'm. I'm looking at the area. 
Um, so I do see a similar property. Are you familiar with Sim Street? Sim Street, um, I've heard of it. I've, I've never been there. Yeah, it's right on the other side of Mary Street, on the other oh, side of the church uh, there. My grandmother. Yeah, okay, yeah. I know. Yep. There's a property here, uh, 879 Sim Street Southwest. This one's similar to yours. It's actually a little bit bigger square footage, but this one in as is condition sold for $42,000 is what I'm seeing. I want to see how he reacts. Okay, $42,000 home. Okay, that's good Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Um, similar properties in as is condition. This one's a little bit more square footage, but I don't like to really go above or below 300 square feet. Um, but this one is the one that I see that's probably the most comparable in as is condition. But taking that to consideration, I mean, is that more or less a price that would make sense to you if you're to buy it cash? I'm sorry, it's just not. Okay. So what what were you looking at? If we can cover, you know, like the closing costs, fees, commissions, all that for you. I'm sorry. That's why I got the real estate agent for you know, I discuss all the all the numbers and the details and mm -hmm. and things that I have to um, address that issue to to find out what's going on with that. Address what issue, I'm sorry? I have to address that issue to find out what's going on with that because she actually states the price. And mm. I say, okay, yeah, sell the he, property. He knows so what he wants. He I just doesn't want to show it. But she now she we know he's not at that right. number. I'm going to give him another one that's a little bit higher. And she knows what to ask for and what to say no. Right. No, too. You know, I just know that, you know, I, I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm a person that's, that's here, you know, so right. let me uh, be wise. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I completely understand that. Um, so I'm looking in the area. It looks like an as is condition. I mean, they're selling anywhere between, I mean, 40 to, I see here 70 if it needs work, if they're fully renovated, there can sell anywhere between 200 and 250,000 is what I'm seeing. Um, are you, are you local in the area? Um, uh, yeah. Huh? What's going on? Okay. Cause what we can do. Um, cause it's kind of hard to give you an offer down to the penny without looking at it. I can more or less give you a range, but like I said, I don't want to waste your time. Typically when the properties are in this kind of shape, if you're open to it, we can have our, one of our real estate agents meet with you at the property. So we can kind of walk through it and we'll be able to give you an offer down to the penny. If that's something that's more convenient for you. Well, before, before I do that, let me, um, give me some time to address real estate agent Kim Kim Kennebrew okay. and talk with her about what's going on because I might be com confused about the way everything is going as far as I know she's the one that's um telling everything with the property before okay before I get getting in, get in the way and start you know making things messy let me um yeah not do that no I agree with you yeah it, it was just kind of odd because when I called her she said oh he decided to move forward with somebody else give him a call back and I remember you told me to call her in the first place so um, no, I understand completely. Why don't you handle that? Obviously, that's the most important piece, so everything else falls in place correctly. What would be a better time I could maybe check back in with you? Oh, uh, what's today? Today is um, Friday. Friday, right? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, later on this afternoon should be good. She, well, she should pick the phone up and then we can find what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. She answered it pretty quickly well, on the second on the second buzz. Um, so yeah, I'm going to let my partner, uh, Frederick, uh, know, and then I'll have him give you a call back later this afternoon. Hopefully Kim gives you an answer about what's going on. Okay. That'd be good. Right. Man. I appreciate your time. Have a great weekend. Okay, thank you. Bye. There's something weird going on here. Um, because he told me, call the agent. The agent told me to call him. I started giving him numbers. Now, Notice he didn't want to show his cards. That's completely normal. That's expected. He didn't react too negatively to the anchor price, but the point of the anchor price is not to get it accepted. If it does, that's great. The point of the anchor price is to get a reaction. He doesn't like that price, okay? And if he doesn't still want to give a price, I start giving a range, right? And I say, hey, similar properties and as this condition. I don't want to say, hey, there's cash comps here selling for whatever. I want to say similar properties and as this condition, I mean, they're selling to between 40 to 70, uh, fully renovated. I mean, you're selling, they're selling anywhere between, um, you know, 150, 250, whatever. 
make a range. But if you're giving specific numbers, you have to set state and address. You don't want to lie to them. Um, if there's no comps in an area that you're or you're unfamiliar with, you can create your own range. But the most important thing in here is that um, the agent and him are not on the same page. When we first called the guy, he didn't even know what the agent listed it for. I called the agent. She said he moved on with some other client. So it's a big mess. But notice, regardless of what the mess is, you guys have to get a commitment. As soon as you get a time commitment to call back or time frame to call back, the chances of him picking the phone are much, much higher. So um, who submitted this, this lead? Frederick, uh, you submitted this lead, Mr. Dyson. So I would call this gentleman back later this afternoon. He is on EST time in Atlanta, Georgia. I think there's some potential here. I just don't think the agent and him are on the same page. And if the agent and him are not on the same page and he work, wants to work with an agent, we can't work with either of them if they're pointing the finger at each other. So give them some space. Let them talk to each other. Follow up with them this afternoon. I think this is a hot lead, especially if it – it sounds like a mess. Not only is the house a mess, but it sounds like they don't really know what to do with it. And I think he really obviously knows that the lease he's want to take, but he doesn't know what it's worth. So he's trying to get an agent's perspective, but the agent and him are not on the same page, okay? Which is good for you. So this is something that you can also lend a hand. Also, if he doesn't like the agent, let's say he calls her back, she doesn't, you know, it just doesn't work out. Always, always offer the option of working with your agents. You may not have any agents to work with you, but you can definitely find agents to work with you. Agents are the ones that are boots on the ground to go meet with a homeowner, somebody that's professional, that's credible to meet in person, especially if you're doing this business virtually. Or if you want to go to your house yourself, that's that's fine too. All right. So anyways, um, let's take some questions here. What software do you use for skip tracing and how do you differentiate between a potential lead and an irrelevant lead? Great question. So actually, let me pull this up. Um. Let me answer the first or the second part of your question first. So um, whenever you're dealing with leads, how do you, you know, differentiate between a potentially and a relevant lead? For me, a lead is not somebody that just wants to hear an offer because you can call hundreds of people and they just want to hear offers all day. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they actually want to sell the house. OK, so. If somebody is a true lead, it's somebody that's truly interested in selling. I don't care if they're asking at a discount, market value, above full market value. This person genuinely wants to sell. So you can capitalize on the opportunity, whether you get it at a discount, create a financing, or you list it. It doesn't matter what route you go. Something's got to happen to this person, right? They either want to list with an agent or they want to sell to an investor. And I always say the pros and cons. So to me, a lead is somebody that generally wants to sell. When you call people, some people say everything's for sale for the right price. No, I completely understand that. So if I gave you the right price, you would be looking to sell. As long as you're serious, continue forward. Some people say, well, I wasn't really looking to sell, uh, but I'm just curious. What's your offer? Well, unfortunately, you know, Bob, um, you know, we're in the business of buying properties, not really giving offers on people who don't really want to sell. So keep my number. Whenever you want to sell, give me a call back and I'll be more than happy to help. How's that sound, Bob? So that way you leave on a good note with that person, but you don't waste your time with that person. Okay. So again, a lead is somebody who wants to sell. Um, you know, a relevant lead is just somebody that wants an offer. As far as skip tracing software, I use uh, batch leads. Okay. Let me drop my, or you can actually, you know what? You can actually go to uh, the RAI toolbox. And you can get, that's the little link I have, and you'll get a, a, a free trial. But I use batch leads for my skip tracing. I'm actually going to uh, be hosting a webinar um, with, with them on exactly how to use it. A lot of people don't understand how much it does. You know, some people just use it for skip tracing. It does a lot more than that. Um, SMS, even comps, a whole bunch of stuff. So I plan on making a video with them. Hopefully sometime next week in regards to how to use it to, uh, you know, most potential. But I use batch leads. You can get a, a free trial on reitoolbox.com. So hopefully that answered your question about it um, because a lot of people struggle with, you know, just because somebody wants an offer doesn't mean they're going to be a lead. 
At least that's the way I look at it. Okay. Um, good question. Good question. Let's see what else we got. Um, he said it's wear and tear. He said it's wear and tear from the owner. So who is he? I don't know. I thought he that is Mr. Brown. It, his name is on the uh tax record, so hopefully he is the genuine owner. It doesn't sound like uh anybody's on the same page. And you'd be surprised. Some people you speak with, I've had this happen a lot. You actually call the homeowner and it might be a family member. You know, as sad as it may seem, it might be a family member that's pretending to be the actual owner until you get to closing and all that mess happens with, you know, some people do that and that's actually illegal. Um, so, you know, you always, the, the most you can do, especially if you are talking over the phone is just confirm their full name on the tax records. If you're meeting them with them in person, you can even ask for some form of ID. You know what I'm saying? I know people that have got properties under contract only to find out that it's not really the owner they're actually speaking with. Uh, whether that's people that just want to waste your time or that's people that are trying to sneak a house, um, you know, so you're going to get ignorant people like that. All right. So let's move on to the next one. We are going to um, Las Vegas is where we're going. Las Vegas. Very interesting person I just spoke with on that last one. But, you know, um, if he was on the same page as the agent, we would be talking to the agent the exact same way as I'm talking to the seller. But if they don't know what they're doing with each other, you got to let them talk. I wouldn't even jump on a three-way with them because it could be a conflict of interest if they do want to move forward with the real estate agent. So this property doesn't have a street view here. Uh, let me see if I could pull up a different way. Anyways, um, Las Vegas, uh, they are asking 200000 what repairs are needed? A few updates in the bathroom. Fair condition. Reason for selling. Neighborhood. He wants to move out of the neighborhood. Wants to move out of state and likes to collect silver and also lived in the property for 40 years. Awesome. All right. Well, I found a street view. For some reason, uh, Zillow didn't provide it, but that's okay. Oh, hold on. Is, is this uh, what is this? Is this a condo? For some reason, it's showing either con or multifamily property. It's not a single family house. Let's give them a call and find out. No point in overanalyzing if the person doesn't pick up the phone. So um, just tell you the quick story, and then I'll dial them. Hopefully, this person doesn't waste our time if they answer the phone. They're asking 200000 I'm going to pull up the comps as it rings. Hopefully you guys can hear that ring. Hmm. Are you sure you put the right address? Let me see. Looks like you did. This is a duplex. Hello? That's why. Hello. Hello. Hey, yeah. Mr. Adams. Uh, what can I do for you? Yes. Uh, my name is Stephen. You spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on Owens Avenue in Las Vegas. Were you still looking to sell that property? No, I uh, back out on it because I'm going to have to have an operation and stuff, and I don't want to get out here in the wintertime, so I take it off the market. You, I'm sorry, you said that you don't want to sell? No, not right now, no. Okay, no matter how much we paid you? No, I don't think so. i got to have this operation, and I don't want to be kicked out here in the wintertime. Oh, you know, yeah. Place to go, you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. There's no rush. If we gave you an offer that made sense, you'd let us know when you'd like to sell. We obviously would never force anybody to sell, but... Um, if I caught you at a good time, I can at least let you know, you know, more or less what we pay for it, if that's okay. Well, uh, I can buy breakfast in the morning and a cup of coffee. You understand what I'm saying to you? In other words, I don't need the money right now. <laughs> I understand. I'd, I'd, okay. I'd, I'd rather be safe at home in the wintertime and get this operation on my eye. 
gun and all of that. Of course. Kind of I'm not, I don't want to travel. I don't want to do that. Just stay here for a while. Okay. Thanks no no for problem. Call anyway, guy. What's a better time to check back in with you? What? What's a better time my partner can check back in with you? Um, I don't know. This operation is going to be in October, I suppose. It'll probably be next year. Okay. All right. I'll let them know. Take care. No, I said I'll let them know so they don't, they don't bother you before then. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. So um, notice how he's like immediately he wasn't interested, and then I said no matter how much we pay you, and then he says something about I can buy a cup of coffee and buy some breakfast. I I, I, I don't know. Anyways, um, I don't want to, you know, if he's focused on an operation, I think he would want to sell. But he said call it back next year. So I don't want to dig in too much. Like, oh, I'll only say that once. Hey, you know, you let us know when you like to close. But if I call you at a good time, I can at least let you know where we would be at. If he says no to that, give him space. If you continue to try to keep the guy on the phone when um, he doesn't really want to talk about the situation, he's more focused on his operation, you're going to seem like a pushy salesy person. Okay. So jab once, then step on the gas, step off the gas. Okay. Um, all right. So this person, let me mark them. Uh, he entered the phone, but, uh, whoever submitted that lead, Mr. Adams in Las Vegas, make sure you, he said, follow up. Well, he said it operations in October. We are in October. So he said next year. So I would probably call him around, I don't know, December, you know, December's, you know, it could be hit or miss depending, you know, what market year and if it snows, if it doesn't snow, um, but some people, if they have holiday plans, they don't really want to deal with it. If he has an operation, he's staying home, he's recovering. He may be open to talking about it so he can prepare for January. It just depends on the person where they live and you know what their plans are. All right, let's move on to the next one. We are going to Georgia, Georgia. All right. So this guy, if the price is right, then he would sell. He's one of those leads. You know, um, when people say they would sell for the right price, you know, as long as they're serious about selling, I, I move forward because I've locked up deals where people, they, you know, we don't know what their right price is. I say that all the time. We don't know what their right price is. It could be below market value. It could be above market value. We, we don't know. But they would sell if it was the right price. You know, we got to figure out what is the right price. So let me share my screen. And then I'll tell you a story. Um, all right. So here's the house. So this person would sell for the right price. Replace cabinets, windows, four years, roof, 10 years old, AC still working, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my VA spoke with the seller. He wants to follow up in three months. Yeesh, if the price right, he would sell. So if somebody says, call me back in three months, that really means a month and a half. That doesn't really mean three months. The reason I cut everything in half is because we're not the only people they're talking to. Now, I don't know when you spoke with this person. So me calling right now uh, may be a little early, but what's the worst he can say? No, you call me too early. Leave me alone. You're a scam, whatever. You, you guys can't be afraid of over calling people. You should rather lose a deal calling too much than losing a deal calling too little. Okay. Um, all right, so let's give him a call anyway. You might get angry. Okay, so this is in Georgia. Let's give him a call. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat while I dial. All right. Let's see if they pick up the phone. There's not really a legitimate reason on why they want to sell, though. Hold on a second. Oh, no, that this is his reason is if the price is right. Hello, Mr. Centeno. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hey, my name is Steven. You spoke with my partner a while back in regards to your property on uh, Singer Way. Were you still looking yeah. to sell that property? Uh. Were you still interested in selling your property on Singer Way? Uh, no, we don't have no more interest to sell it. Oh, no matter how much we paid you? No. En serio? No, no, no quiere vender la casa? Uh, no. Oh, okay. 
Ok, gracias. Tengo un buen día. ¿Cuánto ofrece? ¿Cuánto ofrece? O oh, ahora tú quieres vender. <risa> no, nomás te pregunto. Depende de la condición. Pero si tú no quieres vender, yo no quiero vender mi tiempo. Ok, está bueno. Igual. Gracias. Gracias. So for those who don't speak Espanol, um, <laughs> so he's like, oh, what, 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 what's the offer? Right. Well, and then I told him, well, if you're not looking to sell, I don't want to waste my time. He's like, okay. Right. It, it, it's those. That's a perfect example of somebody that just wants to hear that offer because you you can go through the script with these people. You can continue the conversation, but you know what's going to happen with people like that when you get to the very very end of the conversation when it comes to like, okay, uh, price. They're going to be like, all right, thanks. I'll think about it. Then you wasted 10, 15 minutes of your time. I don't, he didn't know I spoke Spanish, but I threw a little Espanol in there. All right. So anyways, um, he's not a lead. This is somebody that I wouldn't consider a, a serious lead. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Let me mark this guy as not interested, obviously. Um, the next one is in Georgia. We're going back to Florida. Now, this lead, it says agent's first name and last name. Is this a real estate agent? What would you guys put on here? Asking 132. Let me pull this up. I want to make sure that um, you're not putting properties on here that are listed on the MLS for obvious reasons. But um, let me pull this up and see what comes up. All right. Um, boom, 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 boom. So I think this is listed with an agent. Um, you know, if, if somebody ever has their property listed with an agent, the first thing I, is I tell them, Hey, I noticed your property is, uh, on the market. Is it listed with an agent? Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Well, just to let you know, um, you know, as a real estate investment company, we typically don't buy them on the open market only because you're looking to get full market value or above. Um, you know, so I don't know if I would be the best fit. Some people will say, well, what's your offer? What's your offer? What's your offer? If they if they still insist on that cat cash offer, you you got to go through with it. You still got to give them a cash offer. All right. So I don't, what is this? A hotel? What is this thing? I think this might be a condo or something. It's a loft, but I, I don't. It doesn't really show much data here. Let me show you guys what I'm looking at. Share screen. So this is the uh, property I'm looking at. Okay. Looks like a condo. What is that thing? Got some nice art there. Whatever that is. All right. So um, let's give the person a call. I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> But uh, we'll figure out quickly if it's an agent or not. So let's let's dial. Let's see here. All right. So let's put on speaker. Um, what'd you appear? They're asking one thirty-two long-term tenants. Okay. What the heck? Uh oh. Their phone is disconnected, I think. Let me make sure I put in the right phone number. Let's see. Um, okay. Yeah, this is the right number. So I, I think uh, try to call the agent back. If you did speak with they, I don't know if this is an agent here. I'm assuming it is. Um, but it looks like their phone is disconnected. Yeah, so sorry. All right, moving on to the next lead. Looks like you submitted this lead three times, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to call this one. Don't worry. Oh, you know what? I think you put the husband and the wife. You put the, the wife twice, the husband once. But, uh, you know, don't worry. I'm going to call it right now. This is in Orlando. So we're going from Georgia to Orlando, Florida. All right, so hopefully this isn't an agent. Let me um, share my screen and let... Let you guys know what I'm looking at. So this one in Orlando, they're asking $195,000. Paint kitchen needs to be updated 
bath and bedrooms need some renovations, need some work. Okay, perfect. Why do they want to sell? They want to move out of the house and into a new neighborhood. Okay, good. Now, you, you put this lead in here three times. It looks like the reason for selling is all different, um, which it might be a little bit confusing here. So the first reason is they want to move out of the house in a new neighborhood. The second reason is... They inherited the property. Third reason is they just want to move out of the house into a new home. We'll figure it out. Let's see who answers the phone. If a man answers the phone, I'm just address them by Mr. Blow. If it's a woman, Mrs. Blow, obviously. Wait, is this land? Hmm. I don't know what I'm looking Anyway, let's call him. I pull the address up. It's just a plot of land, but, you know, it has details about a house. So let's give him a call. You never want to overanalyze before you call because if they don't answer, you're wasting your time. Come on. But if they inherited the property, that's a really good sign because if they're open and talking, they may not want to deal with it. This is what I'm looking at. Um, this is the address that came up, so I don't know. Hey, this is Tanning Ruth Blow. I'm sorry I missed your call. I'll call you one more time. Call you one more time. Talk about your house that's not there. Okay. Come on. Speaker. This this image looks really old, but it says 2020 on it. It says 2020 Google. Let me open up a new tab and see if I can find anything else. Hey, Hello? They didn't answer the phone. All right. So um, this one, for some reason, it shows it's a piece of land, but they have information about a house. So I would call this person back and see what's going on here. All right. Yeah, I'm bilingual. You guys, I was actually born in Puerto Rico. When I moved here, I didn't know any English at all. Now I speak Spanglish. So, you know, it's funny with people that... Um, like you hear Spanish in the background when you call, when you talk to sellers, they may ask, um, you know, if anybody speaks Spanish, but if they don't, sometimes they'll speak Spanish in the background. It'll be a strong accent of a Latin person. And then when it comes to negotiating, I, I don't like telling people up front that I speak Spanish because sometimes when you're on hold, right. Or they're on hold and they talk amongst themselves, they'll say things in Spanish thinking that you don't understand. Okay. And you actually, have a crystal ball when that happens. So, all right. Beyond the pre foreclosure list, where else do you get leads from? And do you work with companies that sell leads? Great question. So, um, I get leads from a lot of places, uh, prop stream, list source, bats leads, real leads. Um, you know, the County, it does, in my opinion, like you want to make sure you're using a, rep, a reputable resource that's proven and it's referred to you um, or a lot of people are using. Like if you're using a third party that sells leads, I personally have only done that once. I've actually had some good some good deals out of that. But obviously they're going to mark it up because they've already done all the work for you, skip trace and everything. Um, you know, you can hire a data scientist, you can have a VA extract it for you. I think when it comes to data, the most important thing is that you're focusing on areas where there's actually activity, right? You want to make sure that the last, what we do is we look at the last 90 days in a market. We look for those zip codes, but as far as extracting the data, I like to diversify it. I want to make sure it's clean data. Um, I really like using batch leads, uh, when I skip trace it, because I'll get that list back within minutes, not hours or days. Um, but yeah, like we like mixing it up. We like going after obviously pre foreclosure. There's no such thing for me. It's not like a magical list pre foreclosure. Um, what else? Tax liens, code violations, divorce, um, 
some, you know, there's some other lists like water shot off list, 24 hour rest record. Um, there's a lot of lists out there. Some people will tell you about a super golden list. There's no such thing. Um, you know, there's not going to be a, a specific list that is guaranteed to make you an X amount of deals. So, um, some lists do perform better than others, but there's not going to be a list where you're just going to get deals, deals every single lead. So if you are getting multiple deals from a, a specific lead source, make sure you pull more data from that lead source. But I mix it up. Um, but PropStream is pretty good when it comes to like finding out the type of list, but you definitely want to mix it up. The most important thing that we focus on are the areas and pulling a lot of data in those areas. Okay. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, all right. So we got another one in, let's see. Well, actually, I got to check this one off three times because they're just fam And these are all the same phone numbers. So they did not pick up the phone. Moving on to Miami, Florida. All right. Let's call them. Oh, it's funny. They're in Miami, but... It's uh, Atlanta area code. I think there's actually Miami also in Georgia or so somewhere else. There's a Miami, um, surprisingly, but yeah. All right, so let's call this lead. They're in Miami. They're asking $265,000. Updating kitchen, bathroom, paint, fair condition. Let me pull it up for you guys. Put on speaker. Please leave your message. Ah. Uh, let's call her back again. It went straight to voicemail. Uh, let's call her back again. Keep dropping those questions in there. Please leave your message for. No answer. Sorry. Um, so this one was in Miami. They're asking 265. Spoke to her three weeks ago. She wasn't ready to sell right away because she was in Atlanta. Oh, getting medicine and a shot for her knees. When she was done, she would come back to Miami and sell the property. So I was following about three weeks. Okay, perfect. After that, she ghosted me. Didn't answer my calls anymore. Air is 365. The comp that sold for 369 remodeled property and she's asking 265 okay so by the way if the arv is 365 and she's asking 265 i would lock that up depending on like you don't want to lock it up if it needs a massive amount of work but we're in a time right now and usually if it's a hundred thousand dollars less than the rv and it's in good shape it'll typically you'll be able to make some money off of that Okay, even the closing cost fees, commissions, and it really depends on your buyer. Some people like they'll say, how, how am I supposed to make money on that deal, Stephen? There's no meat on the bone there for me. Um, I, I can't flip this house and make a profit. That's OK, Bob, the builder, because I got John, the landlord here, that's going to pay me, um, you know, enough money where I could sell him the deal at a price that still makes sense. So it also depends like your buyer, are they rehabbers or landlords. OK, properties that are in good shape and you're asking a little bit higher than your usual MAO, right? They may not be a good fit for uh, a rehabber, but a landlord, Larry, the landlord is going to be at a different price than Bob, the builder. Right. So you want to make sure that you're also pushing these deals out to specific people. That's why when I you know, when people ask me to be on their buyers list, I tell them a very specific criteria. Because something I don't like is like people say, oh, I'll buy anything, Stephen. I'll buy anything. Add me to your list. And then I sell them. I, I, I send them stuff and they don't even make offers. You want to make sure you get a specific criteria out of a buyer. Okay. All right. All right, guys. So we're going to wrap it up today. I will see you next time. Go crush it. Have a great weekend. Make sure you guys watch replay. Show your team. Implement everything. Okay, I, I think I had a special announcement. I'll announce it next week on my Instagram. Okay, I have a special announcement next week. I believe next week I'll announce it on my Instagram. If you're not following me, okay, follow me on Instagram. Also, if you're watching me on YouTube, click the subscribe, click the like, click the little 
notification bell so you guys know when I'm going live on this. And if you have any leads that you'd like me to call live, make sure you submit them. Go over to the reitoolbox.com. All right, guys, I'm out. Have a great weekend. Go 